Shalom. As I was saying, though, we're looking to be a, we're looking to be with the Lord, and be alive. So normally, when you go back up to the spirit realm, your your spirit is at peace, but you're not alive. Like you don't have a body, but your spirit is at peace. You have a peace of mind. You have a peaceful spirit. We're looking to be with the Lord, have a peaceful spirit, and be alive in a new body. So it may not do you well to look for a husband on this side, you women out there. You know, you young women and uh, older women, it may do you well simply to uh, uh, keep your body in temperance. You know, keep that discipline. And and, and you you uh, lusting after a man, that could be spirits. That's something I had to learn in this truth and, and being able to persevere and not wander astray is, is being able to say, look, you may not even be focused on a woman. That could be a spirit that's trying to distract you. That could be 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 somebody trying to put an enchantment on you. That could be you. That that could be them using their dang direct energy weapon to mess with your loins, to mess with your situation, so that you they they're trying to convince you. Oh, go get a woman. You're lonely. No, I'm not. That's something that somebody had said to me a while back. Don't you feel lonely? Don't you feel like you're by yourself? Hell nah. And get away from me. You know, all of that misery, all of that misery talk. Hey, we we pass that. But um, you don't want to be in the mindset of thinking that you need something outside of this truth. Just being in the perspective of saying, okay, when the Lord comes, he's going to he's going to put everything back in order. That should be enough to be patient in itself, you know, so it may do a good amount of people out there. Good just to be, you know, stay by yourself, study. And that's not saying go up and above and, and, and you know, start start uh, uh, overextending yourself. Do what the Lord has called you to do. It could simply be having a conversation with the people around you. If they're in the truth, if they believe and have faith in the Lord, which goes into 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 22. Or it could be, you know, studying by yourself and you could just uh, 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 have read throughs, make read throughs where you just read through a book and record it and put it online. And the brothers will find it. The brothers will listen because I'd rather listen to an Israelite read the scripture than a so-called white man any day, but, um, you want to be focused on fulfilling your lot that the Lord has set for you. And you can always pray to the Lord to take that temptation away from you. You know, you feeling, you always feeling, uh, anxious about getting with somebody, ask the Lord to take that temptation away from you and keep those spirits off of you, keep those demons off of you, you know, ask him to keep his Holy Spirit on you so that you're always focused on this truth. Something I meditate on is when the Lord calls us up, we don't know how it's going to be. It's going to be like a whole different city. Lord willing, I'm of that number. When when you get called up into the chariots, it's not going to be like it is here where everything is level one, one, one plane. No, in those chariots, the, the brother was going into it. It's like cities because the Lord is going to call us into his dwelling place. So we're going to be in the Lord's city. We're going to be in the Lord's kingdom. So, so one thing I meditate on is, is the Lord is going to be prepping the man and the woman in their order. So he's going to be getting the men ready to be judges, focus on, 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 on the tasks at hand. And he's going to be putting the women back in their order as well. Having them focus on being, being humble and sober, being chaste, being in their right state of mind, cleaning all those demons off of them, you know, getting ready for one husband. So I'm going to get a couple of scriptures here. Y'all bear with me.
This is the book of First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 7. Chapter 7, and I'll start at verse 6. It reads, But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. And Paul had the Holy Spirit on him. Paul had a heavy, had a heavy, uh, uh, a heavy portion of the Lord's Spirit on him in order to, to teach the Lord's people. So when he says by permission and not of commandment, he's uh, giving judgment, not necessarily in the sense of issuing out judgment, but he's giving uh, like when somebody has a difficult question, you sometimes you may have to lean on your your your. Uh, on your on your you have to make judgment calls for i would for i would that all men were even as myself so paul was celibate and, and paul was saying it's good for a man not to touch a woman because that energy that you use with the woman that intimate that intimate energy that you use with the woman gets recycled back into your body so like uh after a certain amount of time, your sperm starts to recycle itself within your body. And that energy recycles itself. You know, that energy recycles itself in your body. So it it it, it uh it does something. I'm not gonna get too deep in it and have nobody going off. But um, you know, it just makes you more focused. When you're when 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 uh your energy is focused on a woman. Every time you see a woman, you're looking at the traits that your woman has, you know, not necessarily, but, but speaking as, as a young man, you know, when you're focused on a woman, you're, you're, you're eventually you're going to, you're going to, uh, get distracted by the attributes of a woman. But when, when you're able to focus in that energy, whether you have a woman or not, when you're able to focus in that energy on this truth, you're able to say, look, people out there need guidance. People need help. So, so my main focus is to help people rather than to be, be thinking about getting my rocks off, you know? For I would that all men were even as myself, but every man hath his proper gift of Yahweh, one after this manner and another after that. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. So Paul was saying that it's good for the unmarried, meaning those, the women that are still virgins, the women that don't have no man, and the widows, meaning the women that may have lost their husband, to remain as celibate, to remain without a husband, which is what Paul spoke of in verse 29. But, um, and that's said because the Lord doesn't, the Lord doesn't want us to just get off our satis get off our, our pleasure, our satisfaction, and then not have a child. The Lord intended for us to be fruitful and multiply, but he put us under curses so that if we were not obedient to his word, we weren't going to prosper, which is what happened to our people. We were not obedient to his word. So in turn, we didn't prosper. So now on this side, the, 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 the other nations then got so far into their own, uh, 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 airheaded airheaded atmosphere that even when you do have a child they think that it's their child that, that that it's their child you have a son or a daughter and they think that they, they own your child so it makes it, it even makes you want to wait because you're like look ain't nobody gonna have no type of power over my child you ain't gonna teach my son or my daughter in school you ain't gonna teach my child what they're what they're gonna be building their moral system off in school what they're going to be building their life off of. You're not going to teach my son or my daughter at the youngest stages of their life because now they're pushing that, that mo mentality that, that everybody's acceptable. Love everybody. It doesn't matter if you're a boy and you like boys or you're a girl and you like girls. They're teaching that in schools. You're not going to teach my son or my daughter that when I know it goes against the scripture. So even, even, even these, uh, different, different, uh, systems in the government put a disdain in your mouth it, it puts a, a nasty taste in your mouth and it makes you not want to have nothing on this side not saying that you want to suffer but it makes you not want to you know makes you want to say okay i'm gonna wait wait for the lord because this is an rs you know i don't want to i don't want to uh 
basically, you know, I don't want to build nothing on this side because it's corrupt. It's polluted. But, um, I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. So if you, if you, if you, uh, you know, if, if you can't contain yourself, find you a man that's in the truth. Find you a man that's a believer of Yahweh Shai and Yahweh. And, and you don't just, don't just go towards anyone that says that name. But, you know, look for a man that shows integrity. You know, a good man that's not going to mistreat you or that's not going to, uh, not, not going to bug out on you. For it is better to marry than to burn. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, Yahweh Shai. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Let not the wife depart from her husband. So the Lord does not support divorce. You know, which is why I say uh, it's difficult on this side to, to have you a woman because when you get intimate with the woman, the Lord intended for you two to bring forth a child. He intended for a man and a woman to bring forth a child every time they lay together. Not just when they feel like it. Every time you lay down with your woman and, and you feel that good feeling, you feel good when you go into her, that's because it was meant for you to bring forth a child into this world. That's why it feels so good. There's a reason behind everything. You know, why do you think our bodies have sensitive areas? Because the Lord intended for us not to mess with those sensitive areas. I'm not going to be putting, putting, messing with my eye. I'm not going to be putting toothpaste in my eye because that's a sensitive area. So I got to treat it the right way. I'm not going to be sticking no, 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 no ice pick in my ear or, 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 you know, doing nothing crazy to my sensitive areas because the Lord intended for us to, 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 uh, use our members for righteousness. So even with your loins, with your, uh, with your, with your situation down there, the Lord didn't intend for you to just spray off your seed and not bring forth a child. And the Lord didn't intend for the women to just be sticking Lord knows what up there, getting their pleasure off and not carry a seed and not carry a, a, a child. The Lord intended for us to be fruitful and multiply. But because of the so-called white man, now all of that is jacked up. Now you got women that then had 30 abortions, 10 abortions. You know, and some of y'all, you know, are going to be saved. But um, it shows how the Lord has to bring us back to when well, I'm not going to say has to because the Lord don't got to do nothing. You know, the Lord could destroy us and be justified. The Lord could destroy his creation and be justified. But we're we're seeking. We're earnestly seeking for the Lord to bring us to his perfection and to heal us. Because if 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 the Lord doesn't heal us, if the Lord doesn't deliver us. If the Lord doesn't usher in his kingdom and he leaves us to the so-called white man, we're going to be destroyed. If we were left to the hands of the so-called white man, we would be, we would end up destroyed. We wouldn't have nothing. Which is why we're seeking for the Lord to deliver us so that our people can be brought back to our natural estate, to a, to a healthy estate. Our men won't be no brute beasts. Lusting after women all the time, trying to get drugs all the time, and our women won't be no no harlots, no 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 uh no no suspect, you know, letting letting any man just do what they want to do to them. That's that's not attractive, and 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 it it really puts a a, a bad you know. I'm not even gonna get on the women like that because the men be chasing after them, but it it it. it People say in the world, look, hey, that don't look good. You know, it, 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 that don't look good. You know, that's kind of how you feel when you look at, you know, the 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 um direction that our young adults are headed, as far as how they carry themselves and how they carry their bodies. You know, not not covering yourself up. That don't look good. You know, wearing small shorts. That don't look good. At all that don't that don't that don't that, that don't look appetizing when I see that I think okay well imagine how many dudes been already been with her I'm not if I have something precious if I have something precious to me I'm not gonna want anybody else's hands on it 
because it's precious to me. I'm not going to want nobody else to touch it. No one, because it's precious to me. That's how our women are. We don't want nobody else touching our woman, looking at our woman, because she's precious to me. And that's something that people have strayed away from. They've, they've disconnected spiritually from what it means to be a son, of, a, a son or a daughter of God, of Yahweh. They think that they can just do what they want with their body and be justified because they say that they believe. Well, you got to actually show that you believe by your actions. That's where integrity comes into play. But but you, why do you think a man goes so crazy when his woman cheats on him? On him? Why do you think a man goes so crazy when his woman cheats on him? Because the woman is not supposed to be leaving her husband regardless. It's in the scripture. But then on top of that, a woman is something precious to that man. Like if you got a, a, a garden, if you got a garden and you, you plant your, your vegetables and, and you put flowers around it to decorate it, you put flowers around it to decorate it and you got your vegetables, you don't expect no other mother, mother flipper to come by and start digging in your soil, start taking up your vegetables like, all right, cool, these is mine. Stepping on the flowers, then you're going to look like it's not even precious to me no more. That's how the woman is. Once somebody else goes into our woman, it's like you stepped out on me. How can I call you mine when you think that you can go do what you want to do? You know? And that's why that, that, that law concerning divorce was brought into play. Because women would step out on their husbands and go and find another dude and then come back to their husband like everything was all sweet when it's not. You can't give what's mine to somebody else. To another dude you supposed to be precious to me and you're gonna go out and 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 think that you could do what you want to do that ain't cool but even the women out there you know it, it hey it do you good simply to wait for the lord so that you can be healed and cleansed you know but uh carrying on and on to the married i command Ye not I, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. But if she depart, let her remain unmarried. So if, if, the, if the husband does give the woman a bill of divorce, because he doesn't, he, he uh, the only case that that was found presentable is if that woman had uh, committed sexual immoral things, meaning she lay with somebody else. The Lord commands that that woman remain unmarried. Unless that man that she was married to first takes her back. But if that man doesn't want her because she cheated on him, then she is to remain unmarried if she's a believer in Yahawashai. But if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband and let not the husband put away his wife. So the husband, the men are not supposed to put away their wife. If that wife was loyal to him, we're not to put our woman away, meaning to separate from her. And I'm getting to the point. But to the rest, speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. So if you have a wife that doesn't believe, but she 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 she's pleased by you, she is pleased to dwell with you, don't put her away. Don't get rid of her. You know, if she's an Israelite, especially if she's from one of the tribes of Israel. And the woman which had a hus an husband that believeth not, if he and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. So likewise, if the woman has a husband that does not believe, but the woman believes, if the, if the wife believes, but the husband doesn't, don't find yourself a different man because your husband doesn't believe or don't separate from, from your husband because he doesn't believe. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. So the unbelieving husband is made holy, sanctified by the wife, by her faith and by her belief. 
and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. So for the sake of your children, notice it brings the children back into play because the Lord intended for when a man and a woman got together, they brought forth a child. But when your children are brought forth, they're made holy because uh, either one of y'all believe, man or woman. And that is going to get to the point here. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. But Yahweh had called us to peace. So if if the if the non-believer wants to leave, if they don't if they don't enjoy being around you, let them go. But if the Shalakia, verse 16, for what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? So you may be able to save your husband or your wife simply off the strength of your faith alone, off of your belief alone. That's how powerful faith is. Have being, being loyal to our Lord Yahawashai. And that's why I'm touching on this topic, because you know women out there. Think, oh, I need me a man. I need me this. I need me that. Hey, were you believing in the Lord? What did Paul say? Let the women that are unmarried or widows remain so. You believing in the Lord is going to have that hedge of protection around you. You calling on the name and praying in the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, that's going to have that hedge of protection around you. So you may not need a, you may not get a husband until the kingdom comes, but your faith alone is, is enough to be able to bring you through and same with the young men and it's it's, Shalakia, it's strong enough to to that for the women the first man that you lay down with because because majority of our people when we're young when we're young majority of our people cleave to our to our heritage to our our people so, so when I was when I was young, I was kicking it with Israelites, not knowing so. So when I found me when when naturally when I looked at when I looked at the woman when I looked at girls, I was like I like my kind. I like Latinos. I like so-called Negroes. You know, I like I like Native Americans. They're pleasing to the eye. I get along with them. I can sit and have a conversation with them, or I could just sit and be quiet and be around them and not feel weird. You know. But uh, you young women out there, you could you your faith alone could save the 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 man that you were first married to, meaning the the first man that you laid down with. Your 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 faith alone could save your husband because the first man that you laid down with is technically your husband, regardless of age. So if you if you lost your virginity at 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 fourteen, whoever you lost it to. That's your husband. That man could be saved by your faith, by your belief. That's how powerful faith is. Now, that's not to say you ju you could just do what you want to do and, and, and not seek to please the Lord. You actually have to, you know, seek to please the Lord, seek to do things that please the Lord. The Lord tells us we are not saved by the law, but we are saved by faith. And faith goes into being loyal and having faith in the Lord. Believing. And if I say I believe. To trust. Confide. Persuade. Trust. Faith. Confidence. Reliance. Crudence. Belief. So that word reliance is a big one. Because when a man and a woman are together. That woman relies on the man. And here's the one I like, faithfulness to a trust or promise. So when a man makes a promise to a woman, that woman leans on that promise. Loyalty, loyalty to a person. So we are to be loyal to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Honesty, truthfulness. So these are all traits that show faith. So if you don't show none of these, you claim that you believe, but you don't show none of these attributes, honesty, Loyalty. 
confidence, reliance on the Lord, to trust, to confide, to persuade. If you're not persuading others to believe in the Lord by your actions, how is, how is your belief found valid? You know, you actually have to do things that show that you love the Lord, that you have faith in the Lord. Now, we're not going to be saved by the law. This is something that's always a, a, a topic, a conversation, because they've tried to make our people think that the law is done away with. The law is not done away with. The only thing is we were not able to be saved from death by the law. So eventually we'd still die, even keeping the law. We'd still die. Keeping the law, we weren't made perfect. But the thing is, the law is our tutor. I'll get this next. The law was and still is our tutor until faith kicked in. I'll get it here in Galatians, Galatians chapter three and verse 21. I'll start at verse 20, Galatians chapter three and verse 20. The point is in 24. It reads, now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but Yahweh is one. Is the law then against the promises of Yahweh? God forbid. For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, Verily, righteousness should have been by the law. So the law was not able to give us life. We exist, but every day we get closer to death. So we're technically not living. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin. That the promise of faith. That the promise by faith of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach might be given to them that believe that believe so the promise is given by faith in Yahweh Shai the promise of the land flowing with milk and honey the promise of mercy the promise of love from the heavenly father that's given by faith in Yahweh Shai might be given to them that believe Now, give me a second. I'm going to search a scripture. get it here you know give me a second so when you say you believe in the lord part of believing you know you don't see for example if i'm if i'm a mechanic if i'm a mechanic and i say i believe i could fix a car i believe i could fix a car but i don't if i don't exercise that belief when that time comes and that car comes in front of me, if I'm not practicing that belief, I'm not going to be able to fix that car because I may forget what it is that I learned to do in the past. Same thing with, um,
Same thing with our people. If you say, if you say, if, if you're an Israelite, a so-called Negro, Latino, or Native American, and you say, I believe that I love my people, I believe that I love my brother and my sister, but when the time comes, if you treat your brother or your sister like shit, that belief is void. That belief is not held accountable because you didn't show that when you were put to the test. So belief is something that's tested. You can't claim that you believe, but then when it comes comes to the point in time for you to exercise that belief, now now everything goes out the door and you don't, you know, in order to exercise belief, you have to be able to study and 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 practice what it is that you believe in. And this is why it's so important that our people study our heritage. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue. So don't say that you love the Lord by your speech. Hello, There's nothing wrong with that. You know, we all, we all, uh, as an Israelite, I'll speak for myself. You know, I love the Lord with, with, with all my existence. I don't love nothing, nothing more than the Lord, nor nothing close to the Lord, Yahweh Shai. And our father, Yahweh, you know, I love the brothers, you know, the same way I love Yahweh Shai. I love the Akim and Elder Akim, the elders and apostles that bring forth their epistles, you know, but that's because the spirit of the heavenly father is dwelling within them. But as far as this world, this world can, can, can get burned up. You know, I could care less about this world. This isn't our rest. This isn't our, this ain't our city. So, so, you know, even seeing the, the. The, the elders getting up there in age, they're like, look, we, hey, I'm trying to get that new body. You know, you could see it in them and, and the younger of our people. We, we didn't been beat down. We still got that, 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 that muscle memory. They still can't get over on us. Lord willing, you know, they still can't beat our people down, but, but we ready to, to, to be rejuvenated. You know, I, uh, Isaiah chapter 40, one of the last, last scriptures, last verses. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh, shall renew their strength and shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Man, our people are ready for that. You know, the elders on down, you know, why you think we, we, we you know, go so hard for the Lord? Because the Lord then promised us beautiful things and we want to show that we believe and have faith in Yahweh Shai that he's going to come through on that you can't have a promise if I promise you something and I'm going to be somewhere at a specific time if I say hey meet me at the store meet me at the corner store at this time don't be late I'm going to be there but don't be late or or, 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 or make sure you're there don't be a no-show I promise I'm going to be there and I make that promise to you and I'm there, but you not there? What good is that if you didn't come through on your end of the promise and you said that you would be there? In fact, you asked me to be there. You know, what good is that promise if you don't come through on it? That's our people. We got to come through on our end of the promise, on what the Lord required us to do, which is in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. The, 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 the conclusion of the whole matter is fear the heavenly father, Yahweh, and keep his commandments. Now, we're not going to be perfect. For instance, there's one law that tells us we can't wear mixed mixed garments, mixed fabric. So I'm not supposed to be wearing cotton that's intertwined with linen. But I can't, I can't keep that here because they mix all the fabrics. You know, when you wear cotton... It's supposed to be all cotton. When you wear linen, it's supposed to be all linen. But we try to the best of our ability. But, um, and on top of that, there's laws concerning, uh, how we're to treat our animals before we are, our, our clean animals before we slaughter them and eat them. Well, we, we don't have sheep here. We don't have cattle. So our animals the meat is the, the 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 clean animals is not in our control. 
We don't know what they could be feeding our animals. We don't know the condition of those animals before they kill them and, and, and ship them to us. So certain things are out of our control. But that doesn't mean that we can't pay attention to them. We can still pay attention to what things, to what certain things, uh, uh, to, to things that pertain to us, as it be. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue. So you could say you love me. I'll use the example of a man and a woman. If I got a woman and she say, I love you, baby. I love you, baby. I love you. You my man. You know, I love you. You my pillar. I love you. You my stronghold. But then the next weekend, she goes out and she goes to the club. I'm going to be like, you don't show that you love me. If she goes out and she lays with another man, I'm going to be like, you don't show that you love me. You just gave something that's precious to me to somebody else. You know? So in turn, that love isn't being shown if that woman is going out and committing adultery. Same thing with our people. Our people as a whole are considered the woman of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. So when you worship idols, when you worship JC, when you call on that name Jesus, when you call on that name Buddha, when you call on that name, uh, uh, when, you, when, you, when you practice Muslim, when you practice Islam, when you practice Buddhism, when you practice a, a Christianity, and they don't even try to keep the law. They don't even try. But when you practice Catholicism, all of these other religions, that's you laying in a bed with another man, with another belief, with another religion. So when the Lord comes back, he's going to be like, all y'all Christians, ain't y'all ain't, ain't calling on my name. All you Islams, y'all ain't calling on my name. Y'all ain't uh, doing things that I require. Y'all are laying down with some other dude. Some other foreign power. So let that other foreign power save you. That's what the Lord is going to say. Let so-and-so save you. Since you're going to go lay down in that in that bed. You know. But um, the point is here. Let us not love in word. Neither in tongue. But in deed and in truth. So in your actions. As well as your thoughts. Because it starts with your thoughts. Then it transpires into actions and speech. In deed and in truth. And that word that word truth goes back to integrity. When you test something, let's say I got a I got a uh I got a glass. I got a glass and I want to know if that glass is a good glass. I'm gonna put pressure on it. I'm gonna put a lot of pressure on it. And if it doesn't snap, that glass is true. That's a true glass. Because I made it to hold water, I put pressure on it, it didn't break, and it still holds water. So when 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 uh when you say that you believe, you study, you study and you put yourself through the fire. And when you go out there, you have to practice what it is that you've been studying. So when people try to offer you pork, you got to say no. And when they say, look, uh, uh it, it, and, and when it comes to your job, your job can say, look, you got to take the vaccine. The, your job can say, look, you got to take the. Uh, the Dracula. You got to take that that uh, that vampire, that vampire fang. And our Lord tells us not to prick our skin. We're not supposed to be cutting in our flesh. So that's a test. You're not supposed to say, oh, OK, I guess I'll do it to keep my job. No, you're supposed to say, no, nah, I'm not. I can't do that because it goes against my belief. Do you guys have a form that I could fill out in order to be exempt from it? Because I can't do it because it goes against my belief. That's a test. You know, so when pressure is put on, you're not supposed to crack and confide and be conformed to this world. No, you're supposed to say no until our Lord, Yahweh Shai, delivers you out of that situation. So the Lord could easily find you a better job, easily. And it may not break one of the law, statutes and commandments. You may, ha you may not have to deal with food or you may not have to be around people so that they don't try to pressure you to get that, get that uh, Count Dracula. Let me finish this here in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 21. It reads, Is the law then against the promise of Yahweh? God forbid. 
For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture has concluded all under sin that the promise of faith, of, that the promise by faith of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Might be given to them that believe. So when you believe, you don't just say that you believe and that's all fine and dandy. You have to show that you believe by your actions. Are you doing things that show that you love the Lord? What did the Lord tell us? How do we show that we love the Lord? John chapter 14 and verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. We're not able to keep all 613 laws, statutes, and commandments perfectly. But when you keep something, that means you keep it in your possession meaning you meditate on it. We're not able to do it perfectly, but we still study it and practice it. But the scripture had concluded, Salakia, verse 23, but before faith came, faith is talking about our Lord. So before Yahawashai walked this earth, we didn't have a, a, an assurance of a savior. So when Yahawashai walked this earth, um, that was the scripture being fulfilled that told us that our Savior would walk this earth and would would, would uh, be a light unto our people. That was that scripture being fulfilled. So now we know, okay, we're going to be saved from, from the current estate that we're in. But before faith came, which is speaking of Yahawashai, we were kept under the law. Shut up. Onto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. So the law was given to us first, and it was given to us by our Savior, Yahweh Shai. And it was given to it was given to us by our Savior, uh, to to Moses, who was the mediator at the time. But um even in Exodus chapter 23 and verse 20 and 21, it says, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way. And bring you into, into my land. Into the promised land. Uh, that angel. Is the angel of deliverance. So Yahweh was spoken of. In the book of Exodus chapter 23 and verse 20. But um. It told us. Only take heed and do not provoke him. For my name is in him. So, so that shows how. Our Lord. Uh, is the author. The beginner and finisher of our faith. Because when he walked this earth 2,000 years ago, that was him letting us know, look, I'm getting ready to deliver y'all. But simply be patient and, and maintain, hold on to what you have until he comes. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster. So the, a schoolmaster or a tutor, a schoolmaster, uh, a schoolmaster isn't it, they don't own the school but they're able to keep you in line with the guidelines of that school they don't own the school they're not the principal but they're able to keep you in line with what the principal requires so the principal is Yahweh Shai and the, the the owner of the school is Yahweh so Yahweh Shai gave us his rules that were were able to keep us in line with Yahweh the school owner until Yahawashai, the principal, made his go round to our classrooms to bring us to graduation. And when Yahawashai makes his go rounds as the principal to, to, to gather us out of the classrooms, be in the different continents, Asia, Europe, Africa, uh, uh, um, South America, Central America, North America, the islands, the Philippines, Cuba, uh, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, Alaska, when he makes those go rounds to the classrooms to gather us for graduation, that's when the law is going to be put in us. So now all the things that we were practicing is made perfect within us. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us on to Hamashiach, the anointed. So the law was our tutor in order to bring us to the principal. That we might be justified by faith. So we're just about we're justified by faith, by believing in the Lord. But you can't say that you believe in the Lord and you're loyal to the Lord when you're stepping out on him, when you're doing things that he told you not to do. So people claim people will say that the law is done away with. 
Not at all. The law was actually, uh, the law was actually, um, validated the law was actually validated when our lord yahweh walked this earth and he said look if you love me keep my commandments feed my sheep teach my people where they're going off teach my people what they're doing wrong tend to my sheep if you love me keep my commandments so the law was validated when yahweh arose and ascended into heaven when yahweh uh uh delivered yahweh from death now, that's not to say that we're validated by the law. We're validated by faith, by believing in the Lord, Yahweh Shai. So we're not perfect. And on top of that, we're not in our own land. So we can't keep the law perfect. But we have faith in the Lord, Yahweh Shai, that by us keeping what it is that we can keep, doing what you can do, we may be saved. But after that, faith is come. So after the law, faith has come. We are no longer under a schoolmaster. So when Yahweh comes, we're not going to be under the tutor of law. Meaning we're not going to have to, 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 to sit down and, and study and, and figure out how we can keep certain laws. Because the law is going to be implanted in us. It's going to be uh it's going to be in tune with our spirit. For ye are all the children of Yahweh. By faith in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, the anointed Yahweh Shai. For as many of you as have been baptized into Hamashiach the anointed have put on the anointed. Okay, now let me uh let me carry on here in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 16. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O husband, whether thou shalt save thy wife? But as Yahweh hath distributed to every man, as Yahweh shy had called everyone, so let him walk. And so ordain I in our churches. So, uh, Shalaki, y'all. This is the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 5, I'll start at verse 4, but power Yahweh who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, by grace ye are, ye are saved. So the Lord brought us to life with Yahweh Shai. So when we seen Yahweh Shai, we knew, okay, the Lord, the Heavenly Father is going to come through on what he, what he told us. He's going to come through on his promise. So that brought life into us. And hath raised up and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Hamashiach, the anointed Yahweh Shai, that in the ages to come, he might shoot the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. For by grace are ye saved through faith. So grace is showing favor unto somebody, meaning when somebody doesn't have all the requirements 
that's needed to please someone. When somebody doesn't have all the requirements that's needed to please somebody else. Uh, they, they show grace onto them. So they say, look, you know, I see you're trying. So I'm, I'm still going to give you what it is that you're fighting for, even though you came short. That's grace showing favor to somebody. For by grace, ye are saved through faith. So when that person says, look, I may not have it all, but I'm going to try my hardest. That's real faith. Saying, look, I may not have my situation right. I may not have everything. I may not be perfect, but I'm going to make sure I, I fight in every situation. I'm going to make sure I'm on point with what I can be because I want what it is that I'm fighting for. That's faith. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of Yahweh, not of works, and works goes into working of the law. So we're not saved through us keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. We're saved through having faith in Yahweh Shai, through believing in the Lord. Through believing that the Lord is going to deliver us. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his worksmanship, created in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, onto, onto good works, which Yahweh hath ordained, hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So, you know, we're going to stumble. People stumble, people make mistakes. Uh, that's why we have a place of repentance to ask the Lord for forgiveness, but you still want to be walking in a manner that, that shows a good representation of the Lord. This is the book of 2 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, and I'm going to end it right here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. And for an helmet, the hope of salvation. So faith going into loyalty, going into belief, trust, uh, relying on the Lord. And love going into discipline, following his commandments, not because the law is going to save you, because you love the Lord. So we follow the law, statutes and commandments because we love the Lord. He told us that that's how we show that we love him as well as as well as praising his name, praying to him, letting his letting his people know what's getting ready to happen. These are all different facets that show that you love the Lord when you're charitable. But it, it uh, Shalakia. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith, going into loyalty, reliance, uh, belief, and love, which goes into disciplining yourself. And for an helmet, the hope of salvation. So by you doing those things that please the Lord, you have to hope. You have to have the mentality of, look, I hope the Lord chooses me. I hope the Lord delivers me. I want to be prepped up. I want to be mentally prepared. 
for the Lord to, to, to test me and the Lord to bring me through these different things to show my faith in him so that the Lord can deliver me. You have to, you have, to have that hope that the Lord is going to show up at the corner store at the time that he said the corner store is a bad that's a bad example but you have to have that hope that the lord is going to show up at your classroom to pick you up from that classroom and take you to the graduation you have to have hope in that you don't just study in school just to study no you study in school to get good grades so you got to have that hope that by you getting good grades the lord is going to get is, is going to graduate you for Yahweh has not appointed, for Yahweh has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation. For Yahweh has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Yahweh Shahamashiach. So the Lord didn't appoint us to anger and destruction. He appointed us to salvation through His Son. You want to have that mentality in your mind. Who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. So whether you fully understand this truth or whether, you know, you may be struggling to get it. You may have heard it and seen somebody out there and been like, okay, that seems strange. But your spirit knows, okay, something's getting ready to happen and I believe in the Lord. Therefore, wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another. Even as also ye do. So on that, I hope this lesson was edifying to y'all. And until next time, Shalom.